Hey everyone. Well, I wanted to kind of continue our discussion on uh, what what is integration by uh, sharing a little bit about the uh, perspective of one of the professors I had while I was at Fuller. Um, Fuller Seminary in, in Pasadena is where I went to my grad, grad school. And um, one of my faculty, his name was uh, Warren Brown. And um, he was actually... Um, a Methodist, he was um, uh, sort of a, in the tradition of John Wesley, and um, I, I like his perspective, um, and I wanted to share a little bit about it because I, I think it's um, it's interesting, and because actually APU's um, history is Methodist, uh, it's uh, Wesleyan, and so I, I kind of feel like there's a good good match with our our universities, um, even though your personal um, denominational background may be different, um, I think, you know, it's good to know what our university's denominational background uh, uh, kind of how it views the world. So um, one thing that you may have heard of um, at this point um, is of the Wesleyan quadrilateral. So if you um, this is something that, that gets talked about a lot um, at APU, um, but if, in case you haven't ever heard of the Wesleyan quadrilateral, it basically um, involves four components. Um, so uh, when we're trying to seek out truth and trying to know the world, uh, we could look to scripture. That's the first one. Um, we could look to reason or logic or philosophy, and that's the second. We could look to personal experience and uh, our own life history and say, okay, what has life uh, school of hard knocks taught me? Um, and then finally, you could look to tradition or history or, um, you know, our ancestors and, and how have they thought about problems and uh, issues and, and ways of, um, you know, what, what's the traditional way of thinking about an issue? Um, and uh, and if you wanted to, it wouldn't be a um, quadrilateral, be a quintilateral. I don't know what it's called, but um, it you could add in um, the science as uh, a fifth one. So sometimes people lump it in with uh, reason. Sometimes people consider it its own. So there's scripture, reason, tradition, um, a personal experience, and then science mixed in, in in there and the question is like well how do you create um how do you decide between those different sources of information which ones do you prioritize and so um my my professor warren brown argued that uh you can think of it as seeking resonance um re so resonance the same word of uh resonating or harmony or this idea that you can have um, things come together. And he uses a metaphor of a, of a radio dial. Um, so when you're adjusting a radio dial, the old school ones that we don't have anymore, uh, you would find a station and you would try to kind of fine tune so that you can get that um, station most clearly. And when, um, what he proposes is that when um, when things are in conflict, when science and faith are in conflict or per perceived conflict, maybe what we need to do is is make some small adjustments and see see if we can hear things or see things or understand things a little bit more clearly. Um, so when we um, see a perceived conflict between um, science and and faith on in terms of creation like uh, the Intwistle chapter two talked about, we could think about it as, okay, well, uh, what are we learning from, uh, what, what do we think that science teaches us, science has uh, presented to us, and what do we think that um, Christianity has presented to us, and look for ways that we could kind of uh, make some adjustments to think about things a little bit differently. So if we kind of um, question whether we prioritize things a certain way or if we've you know overemphasized something that that maybe actually isn't even in scripture and we could start to say okay well um is it possible that maybe i've 
interpreted scripture a little bit differently uh, or a little inaccurately? Uh, is it possible that I've maybe interpreted the, the scientific findings a, a little bit inaccurately to think about them? And I like that because it sort of encourages um, a, you know, open-minded uh, approach to new knowledge. It's saying, okay, instead of just assuming that, uh, you know, if you turn the dial, you, you hear something and it sounds terrible, instead of assuming that, oh, it's just, it's untrue, it's bad music or it's bad, it's a bad station, it's saying, okay, well, maybe we, we need to do some fine-tuning. Maybe we need to assume that we haven't quite got it right just yet. Um, and if we adjust it, maybe we're going to hear the beauty of the music, the uh, the uh, the message that that's coming through the the radio, and um, and again, maybe it's it's not that the signal is bad, but that um, we need to um, adjust ourselves and adjust the uh, the incoming signal so that we hear it the right way, you know, so that messages about evolution seem like they're very anti-religion, but is that necessarily the case, uh, as an example? And he gives an, an example of um, his area of research, or one of his areas of research is neuropsychology, and he's really interested in the idea of, are we um, uh, just physical, um, uh, are we only material, uh, which is called the monist perspective, are we one substance, uh, physical, or are we dual? Are we dualist? Um, do we have a body and a soul, and that those are fundamentally um, distinct in terms of their substance? Um, so uh, my professor would argue that we we all have souls, but he would argue um, he actually believes that that our souls are a component of our body, that our the complexity of our mind gives rise to our soul and gives us um, uh, a capacity for soulishness is uh, a term that he uses. And um, and so that's an interesting uh, question, right? So we look to scripture and we think in scripture it is very clear that um, scripture, uh, we, we, we read it and perhaps believe that scripture teaches that we have a, a body and a soul and that they're separate. And then we turn to neuroscience, which actually argues or, or assumes that we are not body and soul, that we are just physical matter and um, that, that everything about us can be observed and everything about us is material. Um, and the resonance model says, okay, there's, there's some distinctions there. And then it, it, it challenges us to go back to the data and say, okay, well, can we fine tune this a little bit, right? Um, so in, in scripture, we learn that actually in the Old Testament, a lot of the ways that um, uh, the nature of, of our bodies and of our, of our being was actually much more holistic than it is in the, the New Testament. I talked about um, you know, the, the idea that we can kill our soul with a sword. Uh, it talks, talks about you know, God animating our, our bodies with the spirit uh, in the sense that it's all one, it's all interconnected. And so in a lot of ways, the Hebrew understanding of the person was very holistic and, and unified. And the Greek version uh, was was really um, using the language of, of the Greeks, which, which was dualist. Uh, the Plato and uh, uh, Aristotle really talked about, you know, the division between the um, the metaphysical and the and the the physical, the supernatural and the natural, and so it, it's really this this idea that um, there's this division. So um, uh, in reading it, there's this idea that we can reinterpret scripture and say, okay, maybe in the New Testament they're using dualist language, but they're assuming a holistic and, and unified understanding of the of the individual. You know, um, like saying my heart, my head. Well, you could, you, you know, most of us would say, well, of course, that's that's me. That's um, that's my my being. All of my heart, all of my head, all of my strength. Maybe it means all of me, all of me, all of me. And so um, that resonance model kind of says, well, maybe we need to tweak this. 
but science isn't isn't perfect either and science is reducing the person to the physical um, and that's a problem for Christianity because it would say Christianity would say well we have worth and value and so if we're just reducing the the self to this material nature that is just um, you know uh, a product of, of evolution and, and random physics that has uh, taken you know trillions of years um, to evolve there's a sense that our, our being and our, our worth is stripped away and so um, certainly that's a problem to Christianity and um, and so Christianity speaks into the physics and to the uh, neuroscience and says well we have worth we have value we have um, uh, you know this um, incredible image of God that's been imputed upon us um, from from conception and that uh, therefore we have uh, great value in the eyes of God and so I, I see the resonance model is kind of uh, reawakening this imagination of uh, what can science question about Christianity what can it clarify and help us um, understand more deeply and then how can Christianity clarify and deepen our understanding of science and so I, I, I like that model and I really draw upon it often when I'm thinking about in, the integrative process um, so um, yeah I, I think that's uh, really interesting if if you are interested in, in reading more about the resonance model um, I'd be happy to share uh, an article with you that he wrote um, that details it a little bit more but um, I, I think it's really fascinating as a uh, as a way of thinking about the integrative process. So, all right, with that, I'm going to sign off and um, we'll continue talking. And I guess our next topic will be um, modern versus postmodern perspectives. All right.